Soldier Boy Tell. Ah, David Cage. People either seem to love or hate his games. I've never played any of them before, so Detroit Become Human is the first Quantic Dream game that I've ever experienced. Oh, but don't worry, I definitely fall into one of those categories. Detroit takes place in, well, Detroit. 20 years in the future to be specific. Androids have been fully integrated into society and have just started to become self-aware. But like, really Cage? You go for Detroit, an already half-vacant lawless wasteland out of all the US cities for a sci-fi game about technology going out of control? I'm pretty sure VCRs are still the preferred way to watch movies in Detroit. If you're looking for a shithole city near a tech hub, California's got you covered. Anyone want to play Oakland Become Human? Yeah, me neither. You follow the stories of three androids interwoven during their uprising. The first is Connor. He's designed to help with criminal investigations, and his story kind of plays like a futuristic L.A. noir. You'll be looking for clues, interrogating suspects, and doing general cop things with his partner Hank. Connor's story is easily the highlight of Detroit. Not only is gameplay actually fun as you use deductive reasoning and the dialogue choices in your missions, but I genuinely enjoyed his interactions with Hank. He's your stereotypical hardened cop, but he's got a lot going for him. Him and Connor make such a contrasting duo that their chemistry together is always entertaining to watch. Well, now that the good's all out of the way, let's talk about the rest of the game. The second protagonist is Kara. She's a maid android who saves a young girl named Alice from her abusive dad. After you're done with the literal 30 minutes of chores that you have to do, her story picks up a lot of steam when you have to survive on the run. Particularly when you're homeless for the night and you have to make some of the only tough moral decisions in this game. Do you steal in front of a young child in order to find a more comfortable place to sleep at night? Or tough it out in a dingy car while she's freezing her ass off? Shit like that. Unfortunately, Kara's story goes downhill as you press on. And by the end, oh boy, Detroit has one of the most bullshit plot twists I've ever seen. I'm going to spoil it, so if you don't want that to happen, mute the video until this icon goes away. Ready? The little girl is a fucking robot too. Not only does it completely come out of left field in addition to being fucking retarded, it actively robs the player of any good will for her story. Like, why in God's green earth does she have a cold sensor to begin with? What a totally useless feature for an android. Although, nothing is quite as bad as Marcus's story. Marcus is a medical assistant to an old man who has a drug addict son. There is a nasty old argument, and the old man gets a heart attack. <laughs> but get this, the cops come, and the son blames Marcus for the heart attack <laughs> of all fucking things. If that sounds dumb now, just wait. Instead of arresting him like you see the authorities try to do in Connor's story, they just shoot him and toss him in an android scrapyard. After some legitimately disturbing imagery and the option to kill another android for parts, Marcus searches for a secret group of androids to be free. These characters are the most boring, one-dimensional tools I've ever met. You have Martin Luther King incarnate, a bitch, and the one who doesn't matter. They don't really do anything either except the girl who Marcus can romance. By the way, the romance has no build up and it comes out of nowhere. Especially if you mostly ignored her, like me, because she's kind of a total asshole. What? Did we just become lovers? Yep. That's gonna be a reoccurring theme with Marcus's story. Characters don't have strong motivations at all, and it seems like David Cage lost some pages of the script and just said, meh, that's good enough. For example, Marcus eventually just says, fuck this, we deserve to be free and accepted by society, and then Detroit starts drawing parallels from the civil rights movement and the Holocaust. You know, despite Marcus having the option to kill an android a couple chapters before. Not only are the race parallels the lowest hanging fruit the game could have gone for, it's done so in such a shallow, flimsy, and heavy-handed way, it actively insults those events and anyone who actually had to fight for their freedom and equality. By the way, the choices for this revolution are your typical peaceful protests or violent uprising, and it seems either way brings you to the same conclusion. It may sound like I'm being overly critical of Marcus's story, but because of his actions, the race parallels caused the game's world to affect Connor and Kara. His story is the core, and what a rotten core it is. It would definitely help if the world operated under any consistency. Here's a simple question. What causes an android to become a deviant? Is it emotional stress? Is it empathy? Is it not wanting to die? 
Is it from being tortured despite not being able to feel pain? Or maybe it's just Marcus gaining the ability to give androids the bad touch and tell them to fight for his cause. Oh, by the way, that gets upgraded randomly too, and it's just as stupid. Also, before you get your hopes up, the game doesn't even mention the contradictory nature of freedom that this situation brings up. Yeah, let me just jet on mind trick a mass population of androids to die for my cause. That's freedom. Detroit had some real potential too, but fucking Cage went for the slavery angle of all things and ruined it. Another problem I have with Detroit are the quick time events. Sure, they can be fun in the heat of the moment for the action scenes, but everything else is a chore. Maybe it was being foreshadowed in the beginning of the game, but either way, this is definitely not fun. It's not even immersive either. Instead of getting absorbed in the world, the mundane QTEs are a great way of reminding you that this is all a game. As an adventure game, there are many different choices and paths to choose from. Too bad the checkpoints for the chapters are way too spread out. You'll have to replay most of the chapter to get to that significant fork in the road that you want to get to, and if you pick the wrong one, you have to go back to the main menu, get two more loading screens, and just fuck this whole experience. If you're not enjoying the character's story or gameplay, this acts more like a barrier and is a wonderful way to encourage you to play a different game. Some of the people who like Heavy Rain say it's so bad, it's good. I love those types of media, whether they be games, movies, or TV shows, but Detroit is just bad, so I'm not sure whether David Cage is really improving or not. So, should you play Detroit Become Human? Well, should you play a story-based game where only a third of it's any good? No, probably not. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, feel free to share me some of your thoughts on David Cage or Detroit Become Human in the comments. Uh, love to hear them. Maybe you had a better experience than me. You may not hear back from me in a few months, so my channel will go in another hibernation period. I mean, have you fucking seen the September games? Jesus Christ. So you can expect a review or two on some of those. Uh, anyway, hope to see you guys on the next one. Later.